Welcome everybody to another episode of Finns Nation. I am your host, Louis Sung, and today we're going to be discussing some of the thoughts that Miami Dolphins fans are having about the team as we prepare for the six-week wait for training camp. Now, I realize that it's a long ways away from when we can start really getting some real news again, and hopefully once we actually get there, we'll be able to hear some really good things about some of the players. Hopefully we'll hear a lot of good things about Austin Jackson at right tackle, because that seems to be the consensus pick for who's going to be starting at that position. Hopefully we hear some good things about Liam Eikenberg continuing to play at center or maybe Connor Williams shows back up and he doesn't have to worry about playing center anymore we will see about all of that I will go into all these different things that people are saying on Twitter about the Miami Dolphins as we prepare for training camp because this is where we're starting to cement exactly what kind of a team we're going to be having as the regular season begins before that really quick just want to go ahead and mention that this show is brought to you as always by our good friends over at you break wheel fix you break wheel fix is the complete automotive wheel solution. Ever park too close to the sidewalk curb? U-Brake Wheel Fix specializes in the repair of damaged wheels from bends, cracks, and curb rash. Or maybe your wheels are faded or peeling. You don't need to replace them, as U-Brake Wheel Fix can refinish them to like new. Offering complete refinish options through powder coating, machining, and polishing, U-Brake Wheel Fix is the answer to all of your wheel needs. And if you're just looking to give your ride a new look, U-Brake Wheel Fix also offers many car customizing options, such as new custom wheels and tires from your favorite brands, performance upgrades, window tinting, and suspension modifications. Located just south of Aventura, you can reach Mark and his staff at 305-748-0112 or online at ubreakwheelfix.com. They are really active on all social media platforms at ubreakwheelfix, so shoot them a DM on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and get an estimate in just minutes. So don't delay, go to ubreakwheelfix and start customizing your ride to show off your Dolphins fandom today. This show is also brought to you by prizepicks.com. Prizepicks.com is a revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues. Whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each, it's up to you to decide. Now, I realize you're probably looking at the MLB because the NBA and the NFL are currently having a sabbatical, but nevertheless, you can get some really good stuff over there at prizepicks.com. All you have to do is choose whether your chosen player will get more or less than their projected stat. It's very simple. They give you free squares over there for you to take advantage of, special Taco Tuesday promos, Flex Friday specials where you can get your money back if you lose, or multiply the amount of money you can normally win. With offers like that, it's hard to justify not signing up at this point if you are any kind of a fantasy sports fan. So use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. Again, that's promo code 5, F-I-V-E. Go to prizepicks.com, deposit your $100, and let prizepicks give you $100 of their dollars for you to play with and get started winning today. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what exactly it is that the Dolphins fan base is reacting to. So I can always count on my good friend Ron Caniff to provide some interesting content, either because of something he said on Twitter and then people reply to it, or it's just something that he said and I can react to that instead. So he went ahead and went onto Twitter and asked what everybody was thinking about the team as we get ready for training camp. And it's going to be a long trek, folks, six weeks that we're going to have to wait before we can actually get some real Dolphins content coming up here. So he asked, and I quote, We've started the dog days of the offseason for football fans. As we trek towards training camp, what is everyone's thoughts on the state of the team right now? Hashtag Miami Dolphins. Now, I, personally, I don't use hashtag Miami Dolphins. Maybe I should start using that, but we'll see. Uh, one of the comments was from one at David Fisher underscore 71, and he says, I feel really good. The only thing that worries me is depth. That always seems to be the problem with our team in the stretch. Even Vic as in Vic Fangio, seemed concerned about it. Hopefully we spend some money on quality backups. Okay, so that's an interesting point. And Vic Fangio talking about how he's concerned about depth. I feel like every coach to some extent is concerned about depth. And it is true the Miami Dolphins are extremely top-heavy. So with the likes of Tyreek Hill and Jalen Walla at the top of the wide receiver core, that is one of their higher depth positions. They still have the likes of Braxton Berrios. They have Cedric Wilson. They have uh, Robbie Chosen, formerly Chosen Anderson, formerly Robbie with an IE Anderson, formerly Robbie with a Y Anderson. So again, so we'll see what he uh, calls himself when training camp actually starts. But... Eric is in comma, still there. River Craycraft is still there, and we know that he can play in this offense. So the Miami Dolphins are set at wide receiver. But since he's talking about Vic Fangio being concerned about the depth, well, let's go ahead and look at what it is at that position. So obviously, cornerback, I don't think there's any really worry right now. Nick Needham is was in minicamp. He's doing work off to the side, but he is 
performing. So this isn't a Byron Jones situation where he can't run. He is participating in some manner. So Nick Needham, I think we can expect him back for the season at least. If not at the beginning of it, at least sometime during the season, Nick Needham will be back. True Williams seems to be bulking up and preparing to move to safety, so that's something to consider. But that's why they went ahead and they drafted Cam Smith, and that's why Jalen Ramsey is here. That's why Xavier Howard is here. And initial reports are that Xavier Howard is back to his old self, which is very encouraging news. Now, granted, again, there are no pads on. Everybody's just running around in shorts and shoes. So it doesn't really matter all that much. But nevertheless, it's encouraging to see that he has some of his old burst back. So that's a good thing, especially with what the Dolphins are trying to do this season. Again, I believe they are prepping for a Super Bowl run. This is like the year. This is the all or nothing year. This is the Los Angeles Rams. We're going to push until it hurts kind of year. Now, as far as other positions, the defensive line, we know that pass rusher seems to be set. But the linebacker core and the defensive tackle position, defensive ends, that is something to be a little bit concerned about. And that's why we have gone ahead and we've discussed things like what kind of free agents would be available to be able to add on later down the line. Or will the Dolphins be using all of their extra money now to go ahead and sign their own? We talked about this during Pulse of Fins Nation last night that Christian Wilkins, he Ron believes that he definitely is going to be extended. I made the argument now i don't believe this is what they should do nor will i believe what it will be they what they will do but i did provide the just the idea perhaps that you could say that maybe the dolphins will ask christian wilkins to play out the rest of his contract and then sign him next season so that way his first year in the league they can give him a high signing bonus and his salary cap hit won't be very uh painful for the dolphins at least in the first year I don't think that's what they will do. I think they will eventually take care of him. But what they really need, the Miami Dolphins, is that they need more depth at defensive tackle. Because right now, aside from Christian Wilkins and Zach Sealer, really the only one worth mentioning at that point that they have is a Raekwon Davis. And if you look at the rest of the roster that the Miami Dolphins have right now, I'm pulling it up now as we speak. We've done this a couple of times now just to try to see what the situation is there. And it's very difficult to look at and say, yeah, we're good to go. Because defensive tackles, once you get past Christian Wilkins and Zach Sealer and Raekwon Davis, you have Jalen Twyman, who is a uh, who is out of Pittsburgh. He's 23 years old. Brandon Peely, who is an undrafted free agent. Anthony Montalvo, another undrafted free agent. Then there's Josiah Bronson, a two-year veteran out of Washington. And after that, you have Randy Charlton, who's technically a defensive end, and Emmanuel Ogba, who is also a defensive end. So, again, aside from the first top three guys, who are you looking at to say, yeah, the defensive tackle position is good to go? If you really wanted to push for a Super Bowl, either somebody's going to have to show up in training camp and prove that there's something special. Maybe Brandon Peely comes out and does something incredible. I'm not going to hold my breath on that, but... There are some options that they could choose from. Uh, and Dominican Sue is currently a free agent from the Philadelphia Eagles. He came in like midseason and just kind of been, he was in the rotation. He's 36 years old. He's not going to be demanding a whole lot of cash. He made just a little over $1 million last year with the, um, with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Linval Joseph, who is currently a free agent, he was, from the Philadelphia, he was with the Philadelphia Eagles for some time. But he is also currently a free agent. They decided not to retain him. So maybe you could look at that. Uh, Maurice Hurst, if you wanted to give him a shot, I believe that he is still available. Let me just double check on that because sometimes Spot Track doesn't keep track of everybody. Oh, nope, I take it back. Maurice Hurst is not a free agent. He is with the Cleveland Browns. So, okay, so Spot Track needs to get on the ball with that. But I digress. There are some players there that they could potentially look at. Maybe a. Uh, Maybe a Carl Davis, maybe somebody along those lines. But the most intriguing options at this point for defensive tackle would be Linval Joseph and Indomitian Sue. If you're going to look at defensive end, because they need somebody specifically for that position too, they can't just rely all on defense on um, pass rushers to hold down the edges. You have someone like um, Jadavion Clowney. I sincerely doubt they're going to be looking anywhere near him. Akeem Hicks has been talked about on the Three Yards Per Carry podcast several times, so maybe they could look at him. There are options for them to choose from, so it's just a matter of what do the Dolphins actually want to do with that. And other things to be concerned about, this is where we're going to be going ahead and talking about this. We're talking about depth and everything. going to go ahead and pull up another tweet that was uh, in response to Ron's comment here is that 
our good friend Connors, Lee Connolly, uh, one who has been a fan of our shows for a long time now. He says in all caps, O-line, make it better. And then lower caps. That is all. As be- just that, that, that is his announcement, the offensive line. And I get it. The offensive line is a concern. It's going to be a concern until we actually see it in action in pads against this phenomenal defense that the Dolphins seem to have put together, at least on paper. Once again, Austin Jackson, is he going to be the starting right tackle? It looks like that's going to be the case. Robert Hunt is going to continue to be right guard. That doesn't seem to be an issue. Connor Williams is holding out for a new deal. Will he show up to training camp? That's going to be a major storyline if he doesn't show up for training camp. His, uh, his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, he is not commenting on why he's doing it or whether he believes that he should be there or not. But as it stands, Liam Eikenberg is acting as the center in Connor Williams' absence. He did get the orange jersey. We talked about that not too long ago. Ron Caniff doesn't believe that that's something all that important. He thinks it's just a message to Connor Williams saying, look, we don't necessarily need you, so come and work or, or else. I don't think that's a smart move if that's what the Dolphins are doing. I think they need to get Connor Williams locked up because they've already had issues issues trying to find good offensive linemen as it is. You don't want to lose one of the only ones that you can count on. Um, and, of course, Teron Armstead, he's going to continue to be the offensive left tackle. And as for left guard, Robert Jones, anybody? Or maybe Isaiah Wynn wins that job, or maybe Cedric Obwehi, or maybe Dan Feeney ends up getting a starting job again. There are options. None of them are just that appealing. Uh, I know that uh, I believe his name is pronounced Justin Pug has come out and said that he would like to play for the Dolphins. All he needs is a phone call. Uh, Just to give some clarification on that, Justin Pug is currently 32 years old. And, I mean, he's a free agent. He has had a reputation for being good. It's just a question of whether or not he's going to still be up to snuff for the job. So... That's the offensive line situation. I don't. Th- I'm just looking at the free agent list for that position right now. If we're going to be looking specifically at, for like, for, never mind. I'm not going to look at tackle and guard separately. I'm just going to take a look at both positions all the way around. Okay, Justin Pug, he's available. Uh, George Fant, a right tackle for the New York Jets, but he was more effective at left tackle than anything else. And the Miami Dolphins already have a bunch of players who are more effective at left tackle than right tackle. Jawan James is available, but he is injured, so don't hold your breath on that one. Jason Peters, he's available. He's a good player, but he's 41 years old, and we know how the NFL feels about old pay, uh, old players. It doesn't matter if you're still good or if you're still playing at a high level, which, of course, I have to acknowledge Jason Peters was. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. They don't want you. Dalton Risner is an interesting name. He's 27 and still hasn't received a whole lot of a whole lot of attention. You would think... That somebody who played with Dalton Risner before, somebody who coached Dalton Risner in Denver, you would think that Butch Berry would want him, but maybe he's one of the players that uh, did not particularly appreciate Butch Berry's harsh rhetoric in the locker room with the whole sticky note situation. I don't know. I don't think that the Dolphins have a whole lot of options at this point. Do they want to bring back Matt Skura from the Los Angeles Rams? They went ahead and let him go. There's Jarrett Horst, who the Dolphins actually let go, and he's, he's still a free agent. Nobody's picked him up yet. I don't know. Right now, it doesn't look all that promising if you're the Miami Dolphins. Marcus Cannon from New England, he's considered a free agent at the moment. Let me just look him up real quick here. He's, uh, just to make sure on that, yes, he is a free agent, but he's 35 years old. Is Does he have anything left in the tank? Did he ever have anything in the tank to begin with? That's the question that you have to ask with these things. Like, you want the Miami Dolphins to make the offensive line better. Who are you picking up to make that happen? It's not very easy to do that. So now one last thing that I wanted to go ahead and address real quick here, and this is from at the real false pro. He says that he's a little concerned about size and durability at middle linebacker, still expecting to take the AFC though. Wouldn't be surprised if two is MVP of the league. Very positive comments from that, from that one individual, but it's the first part of it that I would like to address real quick. So just a few days ago, I put out a tweet saying that the Miami Dolphins should consider bringing somebody in who at one point was a very highly regarded player in the NFL. He was a very highly touted draft pick. In fact, it was not that long ago that we were all hoping and praying that the Miami Dolphins would actually select this young man, and then things kind of went sour from there. And I am now currently referring to the all Amer- is an American, the American football linebacker, as Wikipedia puts it, of the Pittsburgh Mar of the Pitt excuse me the Pittsburgh Maulers of the United States Football League 
I'm referring to Reuben Foster, formerly of the San Francisco 49ers and also the formerly Washington Redskins. So this guy has had a rough start to his football career. A lot of stuff happened in the background. He's had a, I guess you could call it a, a history. Maybe he's got a rap sheet. But if you're looking for depth at the linebacker position, because right now I get it, the whole linebacker situation is iffy. You're literally looking at making Andrew Van Ginkle go from being the, an edge pass rusher, which he's been his entire career thus far, and trying to make him go back to a position he hasn't played since early in his college career and playing on the interior of the linebacker position. Granted, according to the orange jersey, anyway, Andrew Van Ginkle is doing a fantastic job with that so far. He seems to be adjusting well. He had a really good day of practice, and it's not like we've been hearing reports that, oh, that was just a fluke, and every other week he's been awful at it. Everybody knows that he's working inside. That's probably what Vic Fangio was talking about when he went up to Van Ginkle and said, listen, dude, I want to make something out of you. Let's go ahead and just come back to Miami. And Van Ginkle agreed at a very team-friendly price. If that is the case, then there's a little more depth there, but I can understand why Dolphins fans will be looking at the depth at the linebacker position, and they're just kind of em uh, bracing themselves for the return of a Duke Riley, who I, I respect Duke Riley and his game. I think he plays hard, but he's not somebody that you want to look at and say, yeah, I feel comfortable letting him start at the linebacker position if something happens to the top guys. Jerome Baker's still there. And he's not going to be asked to do as much, which should help him out. David Long Jr., apparently he is having some hamstring issues of some kind. That is a concern. Uh, hopefully, uh, what Mike McDaniel is saying, it's not that big a deal. So we'll uh, hold our breath on that just for the moment. But if I'm looking at depth right now, and I'm thinking that I need somebody who I think can get the job done, I'm going to go ahead and take out Reuben Foster once the USFL season is over. Reuben Foster actually did have a workout with the Dolphins last season. I think it would be beneficial for the Dolphins to bring him in now that they've already worked him out once. Let's just bring this guy in and say, hey, you know what? Let's just go ahead and see what you can do. Or alternatively, if you really want to just make an adjustment here, let's say that Andrew Van Ginkle just stays that depth and middle linebacker. There is a certain somebody who was here last season and is currently looking for a job. I am, of course, referring to veteran pass rusher Melvin Ingram. Melvin Ingram liked Miami. I think he still wants to be in Miami. I think that it would be a really good idea for the Dolphins to go ahead and bring him in if they're looking for additional help. Now, I know it's another pass rusher. He doesn't really count as a linebacker, per se. But if Andrew Van Ginkle is going to be playing inside and not at the pass rusher spot, if that means that you need somebody to fill Van Ginkle's role, and Melvin Ingram would fit the bill. In fact, he fit the bill so well that Van Ginkle was basically displaced from his pass rusher position. So if Van Ginkle is going to be inside, let Melvin Ingram go outside, pair him up with Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb and Malik Reed and whoever else you want to throw out there and just watch defenses sweat and just watch offenses sweat. So that's going to be it for this show. Thank you all so much for listening. I know that this was kind of a little bit of a mishmash of everything, but sometimes you just have to see what exactly is going on in Finns Nation. What are people's thoughts? And there's a lot of mixed feelings. A lot of people are excited. A lot of people are concerned, and I understand why they are concerned. But we're just going to go ahead and have to wait and see. We will have more to talk about in tomorrow's show. Make sure that you check out You Break Wheel Fix. If you need to get your wheels fixed or if you need to get your ride a serious upgrade, reach out to Mark and his staff at 305-748-0112 or online at youbreakwheelfix.com and of course go to pricepicks.com to use the promo code 5 that's f-i-v-e to go ahead and get started with your fantasy sports winnings all you have to do is just choose whether one of your players will get more or less in their projected stat deposit your 100 dollars using our promo code and they will give you 100 of their dollars for you to play with you don't even have to use your deposit until you get through theirs so that's going to be it for this show once again thank you all so much for listening we will see you all tomorrow for another episode of fins nation